Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll turned 150 years old recently, so here's an experiment inspired by that story. One of the famous characters is the Cheshire Cat, who disappears and reappears, and sometimes parts of him disappear and parts of him reappear. The famous scene is when he disappears almost entirely, except for his smile. So I'm going to recreate that now, but this time I've got a cat made of glass. I've drawn the smile on and we're going to see if we can make it disappear. So as I lower this cat into this liquid, it disappears almost completely, except for its smile. This is a classic demonstration in physics. It's usually called disappearing Pyrex in Wesson oil, but I couldn't find a cat made of Pyrex and my cat doesn't disappear in Wesson oil, so I had to find something else. But let me explain the physics of it. So glass is transparent, which means that light passes through it, and yet it's not invisible. We can see it, but the way we see glass is different to the way we see other types of objects. So for example, uh, this box here, which is full of, um, I don't know what that is, but um, it's empty actually, so I don't have any of those things to give. But um, light bounces off regular objects and into your eyes, and that's how you can see them. Um, but with glass, light doesn't bounce off. Instead, it passes through. But the way it passes through is the way we can see it. When light passes through glass, it bends. So really, when you're seeing glass, you're seeing the distortion of the things behind the glass due to the fact that light bends when it passes through. But why does light bend when it passes through glass? Well, it's all to do with the speed of light. You might have heard that the speed of light is constant, but it's not. The speed of light in a vacuum is constant, but when light passes through other types of things, it changes, it slows down. So the speed of light in air is quite close to the speed of light in a vacuum, but the speed of light in glass is much slower. So when light travels from air to glass, it slows down. And one of the side effects of this slowing down is that it gets bent. So it turns out that the speed of light in Pyrex glass is very similar to the speed of light in Wesson oil. So when light travels from Wesson oil to Pyrex glass, it hardly bends at all. And so you can't see the effects of the Pyrex glass and it seems to disappear. It seems to become invisible. So I've got glass which is much more optically dense than Pyrex. Uh, optically dense just means the speed of light slows down even more. So I had to find a substance that was much more optically dense than Wesson oil. And it turns out that's quite hard. It's not the sort of thing you can buy from the shops like Wesson oil, which is just vegetable oil. Um, I did find a substance called benzyl benzoate. You can't get it in the shops, but you can buy it online. Benzyl benzoate is actually more optically dense than the glass that I have here. So I had to mix benzyl benzoate with vegetable oil, which is the same as Wesson oil, until I had exactly the right mixture and it vanished. If you're familiar with this sort of thing, you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned refractive index yet. And you're right, I could talk about refractive index. I really like talking about the speed of light and how it changes as it goes through different substances because there's a nice relationship between the change in speed and how much the light bends and how that relates to the wavelength of the light and stuff like that. Um, and there's a direct relationship between refractive index and the speed of light in the substance. So refractive index goes up the more uh, the light bends and goes down the less the light bends. Uh, and the relationship is that the refractive index is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the substance. My next video will also be inspired by Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So if you enjoyed it, click subscribe and I will see you next time.